श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात्म ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म समाधो क्रियमाणे तो विज्ञाने यांति वै बलासंधानम आलस्य भूबलाधम लय तमश्च विघ्न विक्षेप तेजस्वेदश शून्यता विघ्न बाहुल्यम त्याज्य ब्रह्म विशारण देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ अप्रोचेस वन अप्रोचेस वेर वी गिव एक्सट्रीम इंपॉर्टेंस टू द मैटर और द प्रकृति such people are focusing their all efforts and attention only on how we sit what is the place we are sitting how is the posture whether there is a nice place or not and when they sit their attention is on i have seen a nice light i have heard something very beautiful i had some kind of experiences something was growing up and there was tickling either in the heart or in the bru madhya and that becomes the primary concern about their meditation because they are giving undue importance to matter prakriti and prakriti is that where vikriti is bound to be if you go and stand in front of the mirror nobody in the world can stop from seeing his reflection and if the mirror is corrugated our reflection will be very ugly and therefore we start fighting with the mirror no we have to only understand it is just a reflection not the reality in the same manner the one who is doing meditation he will always suffer don't do meditation we have to live in meditation like we live in the waking state and then do the business of life we are in the dream and then we have the various kinds of experiences similarly we have to be in meditation and what is in meditation where the relative is dissolved in the absolute where the husband is dissolved in the man where the sun is dissolved in the man where the father is dissolved in the man so we are living as the man but we are acting as the husband we are living as the man but we are acting as the son we are living as the man but acting as the father instead of acting we react the moment we react samsara begins like you are sitting here you are acting as if you are listening same thing in the world therefore samadhau kriyamane tu vignani yanti vai bala all these obstacles come only because we are unable to drop the importance to this matter or prakriti now what is to be done there is only one thing you can do remain indifferent don't get lost in witness 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 sakshi 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 there is another way of getting caught in prakriti 
Now, let us take to understand the difference between witness and being indifferent. If I am a witness in front of you, so where is my attention? My attention is on you all. And if somebody comes and goes, somebody is sleeping, somebody is yawning, somebody is looking here and there, and yet I will not get disturbed. That is being a witness. Now in this witness, my attention is on you. See? Now the second thing, being indifferent. I am indifferent to you. Whether you listen or you don't listen, who cares? Then where is my attention? Attention is on myself. And when our attention is on our own being, we will never struggle in two fields. One, we struggle to prove something to somebody. Alas, we don't know what do we want to prove and to whom and who cares for us. And second, we try to justify everything. See, I actually knew I was coming but you know the driver came late and then I told him to go fast and when he was driving the tire got punctured. Who asked you? These two things keep us caught in prakriti. Therefore, we have to learn this. Let us remain indifferent to everything in this world. Then only we have become subjective in our spiritual practice. And when we remain subjective, then all these difficulties will disappear. The difficulties are anusandhana rahitya, we are disturbed now and there. See, you must have seen many places where they have this uh, crash course in meditation. They crush you because it is a crash course. See? And then there will be too many do's and don'ts. Do not enter. You are late. Take detour. Switch off all the lights. Now why switch off the lights when you are sitting for meditation? Is it something bad that you are doing? In the darkness bad things are done, is it not? Why switch off the lights? How can the life disturb you unless you give importance? Anything that disturbs us is only because we have given importance to something. If we have given importance, we have to devalue that. Nobody can do it for us. This is what is mentioned here, Brahma Visharadaihi. Those who are very clear about what is the meaning of meditation, they have only one approach. Prakriti will have Vikruti. We can do nothing about it. Only thing, we can remain indifferent to that. Like when you are uh, going on the road, traffic. And there will be some all kinds of people driving the car, wrong, right, and all that. You can't keep on fighting with everybody. The only thing is, go ahead, that's it. Be indifferent. But we get so involved and we want to teach everybody and destroy ourselves. Therefore, Anusandhana Rahit, in Alasya, Alasya he is one of the worst enemy. There is no charm left in life. See? Many people have this funny notion, spirituality means as if you are going to be hanged after meditation. No. Then, the next one, Bhogalalasam. Then we talk about meditation. Oh, yaar, that day's meditation was so solid. I enjoyed it. Is it a Rashagulla or what? Enjoyed it. Meditation is not a Bhoga. It is a Yoga. 
भोग कैन बी रिपीटेड योगा कैन नॉट बी रिपीटेड दैट विच इज रिपीटेड इज फाइनाइट इनफिनिट कैन नॉट बी रिपीटेड भोग लालसम देन नेक्स्ट इज लय लय इज इन नो टाइम सच पीपल गो टू स्लीप and then they start jatka meditation laya then tamaha tama is dal vitedness they are unable to recognize what they themselves are the reason is we have been constantly functioning through sense organs mind and intellect and that is the only channel of knowledge we have and if we are told that the truth is beyond the scope of sense organs mind and intellect then there is nothing so whatever you call as nothing there is a reality this is how the buddhist gets get lost in this they call it as the Uh, nihilism there is nothing nothing is the reality no there is no sense of otherness when you function through the sense organs it is always something other than yourself when you feel through the mind it is something other than yourself when you conceive some concept it is again other than yourself we are neither an object shabda sparsha roop rasagandha nor a feeling nor a concept in uh, one of the universities i was talking in us and after we talked a professor told mr swami you presented the concepts very well i said i disagree with you honorably i did not talk concepts you are a professor is a concept you are successful is a concept you are american is a concept you are is not a concept concepts are subject to change they are in prakriti prakriti is subject to change see therefore this experience is beyond all and tamaha but those who are dull witted drowsy they can never recognize it and then vikshepah the next difficulty is agitations one has to remain cool cool doesn't mean dull witted three qualities of the mind consciously observed number 1 quiet number 2 vigilant number 3 alert mind is quiet alert what is called in yoga shastra as rutam bhara prajna rutam bhara prajna is intuitive perception and vigilant vigilance on are we gathering impressions on the mind in the form of good and bad likes and dislikes friends and enemies or we are like the mirror perceiving everything but not retaining anything vigilance when these three qualities are abundantly discovered then we are at peace it is not being dull so vikshepa then teja teja is many times the body gets heated up because of the wrong practice of pranayama etc i had a friend <coughs> i don't know where is he now he must be only like me so <coughs> he always used to tell me when we were students he used to do all the time 
meditation, yoga, and all that. And I had never done it. He used to tell me, you must do some yoga, some pranayama. It is good. I said, yeah, you do it on my behalf. Don't trouble me. I cannot. I am not called for that. And time passed. And one day I met him after about 20 years. I said, hey, Mahatmaji, how are you? He said, I want to tell you. I got lungs problem. They operated the lungs. And then I got a back problem, spondylosis, and all the joints pain so much. Why I don't know it's this happening. I have done so much of yoga and yet it is happening. I said it is the wrong way you are telling. Because you have done the yoga, therefore this is happening. <laughs> Friends, remember one basic principle. The principle is like what? In one house, I went for my food, lunch or dinner, and the husband was talking to his wife. More than talking, complaining, he had a new iPhone, and his iPhone was hung. So he said, look here, I purchased this hardly three months before. These people take money, but now the phone is hanging. I don't know what to do with these people. That very moment I came. So he said, ah, Swamiji, he knows. Look here. Is it a Brahman or what? He said, Swamiji, this is referred to you. My phone is hanging. What should I do? I said, okay. Go to settings. He went to settings. Scroll. There is an option. Restore factory settings. Click that. Now there are two options. Yes, you get... Uh, this thing, all factory set, all data will be erased. And with the option yes and no, say yes, it is yes. All data will be erased. I said, restart now. And it started working. He said, hey, what happened? I said, this is what our condition is. <laughs> that device has a limitation or limited ability to handle different kinds of softwares. Apps. But because there are free downloads, we keep on downloading so many apps. Now you look at your own phone, out of the n number of apps you have, how many of you, how many of them you are using? Not even 2%. And all the apps are eating away your battery and then you complain. See, the phone battery drains quickly. And when we restore the factory setting, it is normal. Exactly the same way. By factory settings, we are all divine. But as we grow, free downloads, and so much of unwanted data is downloaded, and unwanted apps are downloaded, and the result, our factory settings are completely upset. And then, jau to jau ka, and a baad me jau. Friends, one of the important spiritual practices is learn to delete. All the time talking about the past, and delete it. Nobody is interested in our past. When I was talking like this, in uh, recently when I was in uh, Vrindavan, all the Swamis and all that, when I finished this, one gentleman, a doctor, educated, retired, treating Bhagavan Krishna in Vrindavan. So he said, Swamiji, I have got a question. I know you don't answer questions, but please. Then he said, you said don't talk about the past, but you are giving examples from the past. What about that? I said, you are very intelligent. Now listen. Do you have the experience in your childhood where you touched the fire, your hand got burned? Yes. 
Now from that past experience, what has happened to you? You have learned that the fire burns and therefore you do not have likes or dislikes for the fire because you have learned and from that learning you became wise and therefore the same burning capacity of the fire you are using to your benefit. So let your past be used to learn and when you learn from your past you grow wise. But instead of learning from our past, we carry the burden. And we simply tell, this happened, that happened. But what do you have learned from it? Now take one simple example. Right from childhood, what we have done? We have fulfilled hundreds and thousands and thousands of desires. Everybody has done. Have we learned that fulfillment of the desires is not equal to fulfillment in life? You have not learned. Therefore, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. How many things you want? Is it necessary? This is what is meant. Don't bring your past in the present. And therefore, wise people learn from their experiences and also the experiences of others. Others are conducting experiments for us. The drinking and smoking destroys us. To learn that, you don't have to drink and smoke. There are people who are sacrificing their life to provide you with the data. See? To know that married life yields nothing in life. For that, you don't have to get married and then divorce. Only learn from the people. But then, after marriage, we come to know this. Delayed wisdom is philosophy. See, friends. Therefore, laya tamashta tejaha svedasya shunyata or perspiration. And shunyata, absolute, as if we have reached a kande sack. Evam vivigna bahulyam tyajyam brahma visharadaihi. Therefore, any experience which comes and goes, just be indifferent to them. You might have read or heard on YouTube. There was one Mahatma in Lucknow and his name was Papaji. And he was born in the undivided India. And at the age of six or seven, he had some uh, totally different kind of experience which he could never repeat and he was very hungry for that experience and he got hold of Bhagwan Krishna, he was greatly devoted to Bhagwan Krishna. From there after they shifted to uh, Lucknow after partition and all that and slowly he was growing but he was all the time hungry for that particular experience which he never got again and like that he happened to go to Bhagwan Ramad Maharshi. There he stayed for three days. No talking. Bhagavan Ramana was never talking at all. What is there to talk? And on the third day, he asked, I have um, been talking to Bhagavan Krishna like I talk to you. He comes in front of me, goes away. Now what more? I don't feel yet fulfillment in my life. Bhagavan Ramar Maharshi gave one simple reply. Anything, any experience which comes and goes is the flicker of mind. When our mind can think about enemies, when our mind can think about friends, our mind can also think about God, but that is only at the mind level. Therefore, objectivity must be totally disregarded. Yes, it is better 
to see bhagwan krishna in your dreams or while talking here and there they are seeing saddam hussein better no doubt but that is not all see therefore the teacher now tells further bhava vrutya hi bhavatvam shunya vrutya hi shunyata brahma vrutya hi purnatvam tatha taya tatha purnatvam abhyase bhava vrutya hi bhavatva if you insist of being just be then you will ultimately end up in knowing because being and knowing when they merge it is called as experience in sanskrit knowing is jnanam and being and knowing merging is bodha atma jnanam and atma bodha so bhava vrutya hi bhavatvam so when you are sitting just be no struggle and as you simply sit quiet without any agitation or disturbance slowly you will see your prana breathing in and out becomes extremely slow and shallow the mind is relatively quiet and in due time the body is dropped from the mind and the mind attains formless state formless mind is consciousness you are not doing anything the real meditation is a process of undoing it is not doing anything the real spiritual evolution is not becoming someone but unbecoming whatever we have become therefore bhava vrutya hi bhavatvam shunya vrutya hi shunyata and if we go on imagining that there is nothing we are rejected the sense or objects sense organs then the mind and the intellect now there is nothing this is where the buddhist end shunya vrutya hi shunyatva therefore kathopanishad says asti iti upalabdhavya tattva bhavena prasidati we can never have an experience of our absence even absence is established as existing there is no body in that chair no body absent is see therefore shunya vrutya hi shunyatva brahma vrutya hi purnatvam the last one is brahma vrutya therefore insist you are divine within your heart don't go and start telling me do you know yaar apan to bhagwan ban gaye tumhara kya haal hai no see and what is being divine now start playing being divine start playing see now what is divine be attentive this example i have been repeating in different context eyes are seeing the green color the yellow color the red color who are the eyes eyes are not opposed to anything so eyes are divine ears hear discourse as with well a disco therefore ears are beyond all the sounds mind supports good thoughts and bad thoughts therefore mind is divine not opposed to anything 
consciousness that we are support waking dream deep sleep samadhi not opposed to anything this unopposed existence is me that is purnatva therefore brahma vrittya hi purnatva so when we are living in this world we have to learn we are not in this world to fight shout discover establish anything in this world if we really mean spiritual practice if you want to get into politics get there is nothing wrong but then get fully there also but our politics is what we sit in a drawing room comfortably taking cup of tea and keep on watching the rubbish uh, prime time discussions discussion panel uh, all the fools are sitting and the super fools are watching we must have clarity what do we want in our life see our condition is ganga ke to ganga da jamna ke to jamna da there is we are like a a pot with a round table flask no stability therefore brahma vritya hi purnatvam tatha purnatvam abhyaset therefore what should be the abhyasa do not get into any controversy in this world don't get in again i am repeating if you really mean spiritual business if you want to do something for the people for the society for the nation do it there is nothing wrong in that but if you are on this ultimate path the other day i told you our upanishad talks the yogabindu upanishad is like a gym here unhealthy people are not accepted no i have got spondylosis and uh, uh, hip joint displacement and i want to learn the you know weight lifting you can't lift your hip you have to lift that weight it is not for unhealthy people gym is meant only for the healthy people for what you to maintain the health see therefore तथा पूर्णत्वेत ये ही वृत्ति गुहाय नैना ब्रह्माख्यम पावन परा वृथवते तो जीवती पशुभिश्च सामनवा दोज हू आर लिविंग विदउट बीइंग एस्टाब्लिश इन पावनी ब्रह्माख्यम वृत्ति दिस मोस्ट प्यूरिफाइड इन्फिनिट बीइंग there is not get lost in small little things we have to get out of this small little things and you will see we are all miserable never for something which is great our misery is what go in the morning i got i never got a cup of tea i don't know why is it but i are in the reply if you have to get miserable get miserable for something better chai de mein it's useless never justify you are being miserable bhagwan krishna very clearly tells tam vidya dukha sanyoga vyogam yoga sanjitam the real meaning of yoga is not twisting the body when the misery is come in your life you refuse to be miserable that ability to refuse to be miserable that is called as yoga but we do the yoga sadhana then become miserable and think we are doing yoga see therefore ye hi vrittim vihaye enam brahma kyam bhavani param vrutha eva tu jivanti their life is in vain see who are they uh, pashu bishcha samana ra they are worse than animals the morning i was taking a walk and on the floor there are some those insects ants big and small ants and then when i was walking so many of them 
any amount you try to save them for somewhere to stay at that time. Same thing our story. We go from here to there, there to there, something happens and die. Over. Are we just born to die or what? See? As trees, we have eaten from the ground and grown upward. As animals, we have eaten from the front and we grew backwards. As human beings, we are eating from above and growing downwards. Now what is the next possibility? See the circle? Eating from below, growing up. Eating from the front, growing backward. Eating from above, growing downward. Next, eating from back and growing forward. So as the body is concerned, human beings have attained, reached perfection in the prakriti, in the nature. Now hereafter, if there can be any evolution, it has to be only spiritual evolution. But after having been born and come to this state of evolution in our life, and again we spend the whole life, Ara Nidra Bhaya Bhaya eating all the time, sense of insecurity, all the time sleeping, and all the time procreation, Maitrananjaya. If that is again the only thing in our life, God out of compassion will say, My dear, it is not your fault. It is my fault. I am made human beings. Next life you will be a big go. This is the last step in our evolution. As we grow more and more within, we become more and more susceptible. Like when our clothes are extremely dirty, more dirt it will accommodate. But when your clothes are absolutely clean, spick and span, even if scooter goes next to you, the emission will show the spots on your cloth because your clothes are extremely clean. And therefore, we have to be more and more alert. Are we getting involved in this world? Are we getting uh, lost in this world? See? This is how Bhagavan's Maya plays. Therefore, we have to be extremely alert that we are not lost in this world. But those people who are thus again and again working on this, this is Brahma Vritti, Tam Brahmasmi, infinite, living in this world without any um, arguments, logic, no nothing, just be. We don't have to prove anything to anybody. Therefore, when some people ask questions, I put this clear understanding. Look here, I will talk to you on one condition. No discussion, no argument. Whatever I have to tell, I will tell and the topic is over. If you want discussions, I am sorry. No discussion. Narada Bhakti Sutra says, Vano na avalambya. Never take refuge in arguments, logic, reason. Paramatma is beyond all that. See? Therefore, those who are working on this and living more and more as consciousness, they are Satpurusha they are Satpurusha, they are the real secrets of truth. Dhanya, they are attained a real, a highest state in their evolution. Vandhyasthe Bhuvanatre and they alone are worthy of worship in all the worlds. The kind of dreams that we have, that tells the kind of spiritual evolution we have attained.
mind is the same same mind is living the waking world and the same mind is dreaming the dream world one day a child boy got up in the morning in his house and started crying so his father came come on early morning you are crying what happened you are just like your mother start your day crying what happened Oh, Baba, I had a very bad dream. What dream you had? I had failed in the examination. Father got angry. Even in the dream you cannot pass. <laughs> When I told this uh, story somewhere, one child asked me the counter question. Samji, do you dream? <laughs> no, I can't. Brush that small child. I said, yes, I am dreaming. What do you dream? Then I told him. One day I was going somewhere and there was a monkey charmer. There he was playing some game because there was a traffic jam. I was looking at it. <coughs> because I was in a car, I could see very clearly. And uh, the monkey game was going on. Gangaram, Gangaram, will you get married to this Rupati? And Gangaram is very happy. And the charmer collects money. And afterwards, the Rupati comes nicely, having a skirt and um, lipstick and a bow and everything. And then he again collects money and says, Rupati, Rupati, will you get married to Gangaram? And she says, Thu, Thu, Thu. And by the time this was going on, traffic jam was through and we went ahead. That day, I had a dream. The dream, normally my dream is, I am giving lecture and people are sleeping. <laughs> It's the only dream I had. But that day I had a peculiar dream, that Gangaram was giving lecture and Rupmatis were sleeping. <laughs> So whatever is your day lived by the mind, the same thing is extended in the dream. See, right? Therefore, when we thus become aware of this, then there is no other theme. Everywhere you get the same thing. Nothing is. This is as he puts in his words, Kami hi nari piyari jimi lobi hi priya jimi dam. Timi ragunatha nirantara priya lago ho hi dam. Like for a greedy person, wherever he goes, he thinks only about money. When a conjuice father takes the children and the wife for some nice treat on a hill station and the children say, Papa, I want to order. No, no, nobody will order. I will order. And the papa is not looking at the dishes, looking at the cost. <laughs> and then he tells the word, Petra, huh? get this item number 68, four. Four missionary models. <laughs> they were the only cheapest. He has gone there for spending money or for saving money. In the same manner, a devotee A seeker of the truth is getting messages from every experience of life. That is what is called a spiritual life. See? Everywhere you get the same message. One day I was seeing an aquarium. My friend said, what are you seeing? I said, you imagine? He said, fish and I said nothing. Then, I said, I am seeing the water. What is there to see in the water? I said, I am just thinking, if we add more fish in the water, is it a burden to the water? No. If we remove all the fish from the water, is it a loss? No. Now apply it to yourself. When there is waking and dream, is it a game for us? When it is, a uh, deep sleep and samadhi, is it a loss? When I am sun, 
I am light. When I become husband, I become heavy wife, wife also. Then I become father. Again, have I become heavy? No. See, friends, the truth is that to which nothing can be added, nothing can be taken away. Now, you, a dozen of you are suppose in front of me, in your place, if there are 10,000 people, is it a burden to my eyes? This is what is the truth. See, friends, it's very simple. Then, Yeshamruti samamrutva paripakvacha sapuna te vahi sat brahmatam prapta netaresha pravadina Yesham Vritti Samavruddha Thus, those whose equanimity has grown to the maturity Vritta to the maturity and Paripakvacha Sapuna and there is no possibility of reverting back. See, there is Yoga Vrashtra, there is no Jnana Vrashtra, there is no Bodha Vrashtra. There is no fall. Therefore, Paripukvaja Sapana, Tevaisat Brahmatam Prapta, they alone have merged in the Absolute. Now, merging in the Absolute doesn't mean they have died. See? What is the merging in the Absolute? Although you are a husband, you are not miserable. So, what happened? Husband has merged in the man. Then how such a um, husband man will live? There was a lady, she was asking her husband. Uh, and, he, and he was reading something, newspaper or something, and she was talking constantly. She was asking, uh, I am thinking of cutting my hair. Cut. No, but my hair are so long, very few ladies have such long hair. Don't cut. No, but this is the fashion today that people are cutting their hair. Cut. But if I cut, my mother will get very angry. Don't cut. <laughs> this cut, don't cut, cut, don't, don't, going on. After she, after she changed the topic, and what should I prepare for breakfast? Cut. <laughs> Who is listening? <laughs> See, friends, this is merging of the husband in the man. Exactly the same way, merge yourself in the divine. You don't have to give up anything because nothing is yours. Now see how simple it is. But we make our life complicated. Therefore, and not those who are only logic, argument, this and they try to prove something. This is superior, that is, forget about everything. Then, Kushalam, Brahma Vartayam, Vrutihina, Suraginaha, Te Api Adhyani Tayanunam, Punarayati Yanticha. And those Kushala Brahma Vartayam, like us, giving lectures, 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 Kushala, expert. And vritti hina, but all the time frustrated, I wanted this thing, I did not get this thing. And suragina, and attached to the worldly things and beings, constantly wanting something or the other, te api ajnani they are equal to the ignorance. See? And therefore, nuna punarayanti yantija, and they continue to be in this relative world. There is no end to their frustration. Therefore, friends, if we really are seeking the absolute, the symptoms of this is there cannot be any burden of any desires on our mind. That joy is like what? Desire-free existence. One example. There was a man. Why I give my example? I had seven daughters. This is just an example. <laughs> I had seven daughters. 
Six of them found out their fools and got hooked. The seventh one was dumb. So I had to take care of her marriage. So wherever I go, I went to some marriage. There I was searching for the boys. Then I went somewhere for cremation. There also I was searching, not in the dead ones, but other people. Everywhere only one theme, some boy for my daughter. And one day I got a fool and got him hooked and quit both of them out. Then after, ah. Unload. And therefore, those who are smoking, and when they give up smoking, their joy of renunciation of smoking is much more than they were smoking throughout their life. You watch this thing in this world. Some people, they say, no, I don't take onion and garlic. They have got such a self-respect about it. Others eat, I don't eat. The joy is that of giving up, not holding on to. So, Nivishardam Natishtanti Vrutim Brahma Mayimvina Yatha Nishtanti Brahma Adya Sarakadya Shukadaya Further they say that Nivishardam Natishtanti Vrutim Brahma Mayimvina Not even a fraction of moment we are carried away by the Prakriti. Not even a fraction. 24-7 abiding in the truth. Means what? Living at a zero desire level. Living at a zero complaint level. No complaint. We do good things, but there is only an element of desire behind it. For example, I'll tell you, this happened in Mahabaleshwar. We had a retreat there. And uh, one day we used to, we went for a walk. After the morning lectures, nice bright sun, cold climate, and about a dozen of us. When we were going, one Amma got a shawl for me. Swamiji, I got a shawl for you. Hey, thank you so much. Put it on my shoulder. And then we went somewhere, we sat on a lawn, watching the valleys and talking something. So to sit down, I took the shawl, put it on the lawn, sat on that. And after everything, when everything was over, we were going. And I left the shawl behind. Because I didn't carry it, so it was no in my mind. So when I went, she lifted it, cleaned it. Swamiji, you left your shawl there. I said, what I do with my shawl? Why you should worry? <laughs> no, I got it for you with such great love. I said, it is still yours. You are not given me. <laughs> See, friends, how we get caught up in this world? Therefore, Nothing in this world should ever attack, attract our mind. Karanam yaste vai karyam, karanam tasya jayate, karanam tato nashit karya bhave vicharata. See? A cause is proved only by studying the effects. If there are no effects, cause cannot be established. In short, we have to transcend the cause and effect. There is neither cause nor effect. Pure existence is beyond cause and effect. In Keno Parishad, the teacher tells the student, what my guru told me that I will tell you. And he says, Anya Devata Viditat Atha or Viditat Adhi. That, what is that is never said. Only the sarvana, only the proper noun, uh, only the common noun. This, uh, that, what you are asking, that is other than the known and the unknown. 
ఓన్లీ లోన్ వెళ్ళినా అంటే యూ ఫైండ్ అవుట్ నో దిస్ ఈజ్ వాట్ ఐ వాస్ టోల్డ్ బై మై గురు నో యూ ఫైండ్ అవుట్ ఓ గాడ్ నాట్ ఈస్ లోన్ ఐ నో గుజరాతీ అదర్ దాన్ ద నోన్ గుజరాతీ భగవాన్ ఈజ్ నాట్ గుజరాతీ ఐ డోంట్ నో పంజాబీ ఓ అదర్ దాన్ ద అన్నోన్ ఆల్సో భగవాన్ ఈజ్ నాట్ పంజాబీ ఆల్సో గుడ్ సీ స్లోలీ స్లోలీ when you start thinking deeply with proper understanding you will come to know known is the effect unknown is the cause when we go to the doctor we tell the doctors the symptoms and from the symptoms which are known to us the doctor arrives at the cause which was unknown so when it is said the truth is beyond the known and the unknown means what it is beyond the cause and effect it is neither the cause nor the effect now if we are working on this the truth is neither cause nor effect what will happen you will not ask any question why 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 because the sky is too high now apply this knowledge in your day to day experience have we ever asked a question why the fire is hot we have never asked we accepted it then thereafter we decide how to interact with the fire exactly the same way this is how the world is now we say how to interact with this world don't get lost but intellectuals get lost only in cause and effect and when something is beneficial to us because of something we get attached to that when something is harming us because of something we hate that whenever we are functioning on the cause and effect relationship we deposit likes and dislikes in our mind and when likes and dislikes are deposited in the mind we are a samsari see always keep an ideal in front of you a mirror keep a nice mirror and sit before that mirror and learn do this practice again and again what is the thickness of the mirror point 1 mm there is now where i am sitting 5 feet away from the mirror where is the reflection in the mirror also 5 feet deep but mirror is only point 1 or point 2 mm thick how that 5 feet depth has come it appears but doesn't exist because it is a reflection think now the same mirror is showing the steadiness of the posture as well as when i move the hand the movement of the hand is also shown in the reflection is also moving is it anything happening there nothing is happening it only appears one aspect so reflection is there but it is not there there because we can see it is not there because nothing is happening to the reflection or the mirror think and the next step the same surface of the mirror has become everything whatever is in behind us some table some chair some flower our clothes everything the same mirror has become therefore these two conditions happen either we look at the world as an illusion therefore illusions we enjoy but we don't desire the rainbow we enjoy hey how beautiful it is we enjoy 
but we never desire. Let me take a piece of rainbow and I'll give it to my honey darling. No. We enjoy. Same way. Live in this world happily, cheerfully, enjoy, celebrate every moment. But don't desire anything. You are walking spiritual path. Yes. And the second approach is like the same surface of the mirror has become everything. In the same manner, I alone is everything. If I am not there, my son cannot be there. If I am not there, my wife cannot be there. If I am not there, my business cannot be there. I is the upholder of the total world. And we never have desire about ourselves. Put these two things together. Whether we take this world as an illusion or we take this world as nothing but, but our own extension, there cannot be any desire. See? Ultimately, all things boil down to one point. Lesser the desires we entertain, nearer we are to the truth. Such people are working dynamically in this world. And yet, they are relaxed. And we do small little things and frustrated. We all have achieved in our life under the pressure of desire. And we know how much we have achieved. Now take one example, Swami Vivekananda. What desire he had? Nothing. And see his achievement. Even if you simply want to read the total published work of Vivekananda, our whole life will not be enough. He did not function under the pressure of desire, but he functioned with inspired amour. Achievements are possible not under the desire pressure, but when you are performing under inspiration. This is what Bhagavad Gita tells to Arjun. Kleipyam Masma Gama Partha Naitatva don't lead a life of uninspired existence. We have to be inspired every moment. <laughs> Therefore, karanam yasyavi karyam karanam tasyajaya. Don't get lost in this cause if a cause if a. This world has always been like this thing. What is best you are doing? Do it and enjoy. And vicharataha. And this can happen only if you think properly. Thoughts are of two types. One type of thoughts are called as vichar. Second type of thoughts are called as vikara. Vichara is contemplation. Vikara is agitation. Normally we are agitated. Kama, Krodha, Loha, Moha, Madha, Vatsarya. These are the vikara. Unhealthy eruptions in the mind. Reaction in the mind. Contemplation is the subjective thinking process by which we get out of the mess of our own wrong thinking. Atha shuddham bhaved vastu jadvai vachama gojaram udeti shuddha chitta nam rutti jnanam tataparam In this manner, vastu shuddham bhaved when we become more and more free from the hang-ups of these worldly things and that which is beyond the scope of the speech in the sense organs, etc. And then our understanding becomes perfect. Then there is no confusion about when we say Aham Brahmasmi, what does it mean? Waves are water with the shape. Water is without the influence of the shapes of the waves. Therefore, although water is supporting all the shapes of the waves, yet water is beyond all the shapes. And therefore, if we want to see the water, we don't have to destroy the waves. Only come to know in the same manner. One reality alone has taken these many shapes, but behind all of them there is one reality. 
भावितम तीव्र वेगेन यद्वस्तु निश्चयात्मक दृश्यम ही अदृश्यता मिलता ब्रह्माकारेण चित्त देर आफ्टर अगेन अगेन दीज टू थिंग्स आई टोल्ड यू ट्राई नंबर वन वेन यू आर सिटिंग क्वाइट लिसन टू साइलेंस spend as long time as you can to listen to silence one day by god's grace it will click that when we listen to silence we transcend the ears ears can hear only the sounds ears cannot hear the silence but when we are remaining aware of the silence we transcend not only the sounds of the objects but the sense organs the ear and we a land up in the mind see that journey objects to the sense organs to the mind this is the journey and you cannot repeat silence and that which cannot be repeated is infinite but the mind is not so simple the what the mind does either goes in the past memory or starts solving the future worry then the second thing first listen to silence and when do you feel now the mind is going to start a chatter box immediately stop talking to yourself initially we will not be able to do it even for 5 to 10 seconds but don't give up like a child who learns walking how he learns slowly first he walks in the air then he comes to realize i am not progressing then he turns comes on the stomach then he starts like a um, reptile moving with the stomach that also doesn't work then he comes on the knees slowly he is learning something exactly the same way have patience shraddha and sabur have faith in yourself and have patience spend more and more time on it भावितम तीव्र वेगेन यद्वस्तु निश्चयात्मक दृश्यम ही अदृश्यता मीत्वा देन ऑब्जेक्टिव वर्ल्ड विल बी ऑफ नो कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस देन ब्रह्माकारेण चिन्तये थिंकिंग ऑफ गॉड इज नॉट थिंकिंग ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आत्मचिंतन इज एब्सेंस ऑफ अनात्मचिंतन विद्वा नित्यम सुखे तिष्ठे धिया चिद्रस पूर्णया 
and such a vidwan, such a wise seeker, should always remain in this mode, all in and through Chidrasa Purnaya, cheerful, happy, and fully withdrawn, yet dynamically involved in this world.